This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so as we left off last time, Dalit, welcome. I'm just going to send again. Thanks, hi. Okay, I'm just going to put the link again. The link is just on the chat. Okay. Oh, great, thanks. I've got, I've actually got the book, so I've got even the, better. I've got the actual even book. Better. Okay, Good. thanks. Okay. So we're on human responsibility and paragraph four in human responsibility in Matzav HaAdam Ba'olam Azeh. Man, uh, humankind in this world, human responsibility. And we discussed how there is this constant struggle, battle that goes on between the physical and the spiritual. And we discussed that there is a very serious home court advantage that the physical has. We are physical beings in a physical world who must engage in physical acts like eating and drinking. We've got to earn money in order to buy the things that that we need in order to survive. So God put us in a situation where in order to survive, we have to be enmeshed in the physical And then he expects us to focus on the spiritual. How is how how are we supposed to do that? And then just to reiterate that last paragraph, which is the the first paragraph of number four that we left off with last week, which is just so powerful. Ulam, may Omek Atzad Chachmato from the depth of the wisdom of his understanding, Yitvarak Shemo Hayelusadir Dvarim Ba'open that he arranged things in a manner, that even as a person is shakua, is stuck, involved in all of this physicality, as we've written, from that physicality itself, from that bodily involvement, involvement of the body, it is through that that we can achieve this shleimut, this, this loftiness, this perfection, and this ascent to purity and to a lofty state. On the contrary, our lowliness, that is our loftiness. By utilizing the physical, by transforming the physical into spiritual, by you, you know, the tefillin is made from the hide of a cow, and it becomes kodesh kadashim. It becomes holy of holies. A sefer Torah is written on the hide of a cow, and it becomes kodesh kadashim. So if the hide of a cow with words of Torah on it can become holy of holies. So imagine a human being. When we involve ourselves with those things which will lift us up. So when we take the physicalities like turning dust into gold. We take that physicality and use it in the proper manner. As we'll see in these next few paragraphs. Then it is our involvement, our lowly involvement, all that is physical, that becomes our, our, our uh, accelerator force that shoots us up. That is what gives us this ability to rise to a height, as we mentioned last time, that's greater than angels. They're only in a spiritual realm. But we can transform the physical into the spiritual. And in his classic Mesilat Yesharim, The Path of the Just, the Ramchal speaks about, the same author Ramchal speaks about, there's one level called Precious. Precious is separating yourself from it. But a higher level is Kedusha, where you are involved in it and you uplift it, you sanctify it. And I, I, I've pointed out, and I'm sure in this class and other classes, that we use the term, the, the root word, kadosh. We use it for marriage, kiddushin. 
So that which Christianity or perhaps Catholicism, I don't know, I'm not clear, but that which Catholicism says is just uh, an allowance for the weak, but those who are really, really strong will be, will, 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 will be uh, abstaining, become a priest or become a nun. We say, no, that is kiddushin, that is holiness, that is marriage. To be involved in a physical relationship, an intimate relationship, and to make that into a holy relationship. We make a kiddush on alcoholic beverages, that which Islam says is absolutely prohibited. That's where we make our kiddush our sanctification when we usher in Shabbat, whether it's an, or at a wedding, or at a Brit Mila, or at a Pidyon Aben, at all of these holy events, we involve that wine. We involve that Bori Priha Gefen. Because Kedusha is transforming that which is mundane, that which is base, that which is earthly, and transforming that into Kedusha. And through this, one can acquire this, 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 this holiness, this honor, this loftiness, the ain kamohu, that is incomparable. Even the, those beings that are purely spiritual, they can't do this. When we transform darkness into light, the etat salmavet, Lenoga Yazriach. And when we turn Salmavet, literally the, 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 the shadow of death, into a Noga Yazriach, into a glowing glory. So that is the mission here. And the fact that we're in this world over here, this physical world, that is what allows us to catapult. That was what I was looking for before. To catapult up to the highest of levels. The the Creator, blessed is His name, created these different parameters, boundaries, ustarim, and different arrangements for a person. In the usage that we use, that we have in this world and in that which was created in this world. And the intent was that when a person uses this world within those parameters, within those arrangements, and with that intent, that the Creator commanded, then that physical, material act, that physical, material thing itself, brings about this shleimut, brings about this loftiness. And that then becomes internalized. That becomes a part of the person. This essence of perfection and loftiness. And we will ascend through that. From our lowly present state. And we will lift up as a result Mimenu, as a result of that, from that, because of that, due to that, we can lift ourselves up. The ulam, and we'll soon see exactly, though I imagine you, you figured it out already, what this is referring to. The ulam, yona, and God looked down upon kol koleh all of those aspects of chisaron, of deficiency, of lacking, of lowliness, hamut ba'im shel adam, which are part of who we are, v'al kol inyanei hamala v'yekar amiti hamistarchim lo liot ra'oi, and all that is necessary for us for to become worthy, lishiemit dabek bo yitvarach shmo v'nenavitovo, 
to accomplish this purpose of creation that we discussed in the earlier chapters, which is to cling to God and to uh, bask in his goodness. And based on all of this, that which will bring us down and that which will lift us up, he set up all of these patterns, all these arrangements, and all of these boundaries, parameters, that when we observe them, when we stay within these parameters, they will become internalized, part of us, all that which is necessary, teaches to reach this level that we mentioned, and they will be removed, separated from us, anything which will serve to distance us, to buffer us, to get in the way of our having of this dveikut. So by doing these actions and by staying away from, the, from other things, that puts into us, we internalize this now, this this loftiness that will allow us to have this devekus with Hashem. The evil And had there not been this original decree that we die, meaning let's say Adam and Chava before they ate from the Eitz Adas, if we would not have this previous decree that we would die, like we mentioned, Amasima Chazeket then right now the neshama would get charged and supercharged and uh, and the physicality, the darkness of the body would get weaker and weaker. And we become purer and purer and lighter and lighter. And the two of us would ascend to that dveikos, to that clinging with Hashem as Adam and Chava could have had they been omed benisayon, had they overcome that challenge. However, but because of the decree of ultimate, eventual death, it doesn't happen in one go. It doesn't happen as we are living here in this world. However, the neshama is getting supercharged. And the body has this potential enlightening, uh, purification. Even though it's not happening in a clear, visible manner now. And a person acquires this state of perfection in potential. She say which will then become realized in the proper time. So that is the world that we are in. We have this potentialized, but I think I mentioned last time when we say we say Kedusha, we say Shimcha Baolam. Let us sanctify your name in this world. Kishem Shemati Shimoso, in the same way that they sanctify it. Bishmei Marom, in the heights of the heavens, as it's written by Yenavi and the Karazel Zevi Amar, the angels call to one another and they say, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. We too say Kadosh. The angels say, Baruch Kavod Hashem Im Komo. We too say it because we want to sanctify Hashem, your name, the same way they do up above. And I believe the Chavetz Chaim says, what, we think we can do it in the same way, in the same level as angels? And his answer is, like the Ramchal over here says, no, we do it better than the angels. Because they have it all open, clear in front of them. Whereas we live in a world of concealment, of obfuscation. And when we can see through that, and we say, Kadosh, 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 that is a turning, Choshech, Laor, that's turning darkness into light. That is illuminating this concealment. You know, we start a Shmona Esrei Baruch Ata Hashem. Right? We take three steps back and three steps forward. There are some that explain that three steps back represents how Hashem, so to speak, took three steps back to hide himself in this world. And what do we do? 
We take three steps forward. We are not going to be fooled. We know it's you. So Hashem, you took three steps back. We're taking three steps forward and saying, we know it's you. Baruch Atah Hashem. Now, hey, shall, uh, uh, paragraph five. As you might have assumed, these patterns, these boundaries, these orders, these systems, what are these systems that Hashem put in place? Then we stay within these boundaries and we do these certain acts. Then we, A, dispel anything that will drag us down and involve ourselves in that which, is, which will lift us up. Hineheim klal ha-mitzvot. That, my friends, is what the mitzvot are all about. Ha-sayin v'alavin. The do's and the don'ts. Every single one of them is focused, is aimed el tachlit to this purpose of haknot ba'adam for humankind to acquire v'ha'atzim bo and to make it an etzem to make it an integral part of that person achat mimadre got ha'ma'alah ha'matiches ha'anu Every mitzvah is to inculcate into a person one aspect of this level of excellence, of loftiness. The hasarat and the removal. Echad One aspect of the darkness, of the lacking, of the deficiency. Through either the doing of the positive, yes, you should do, Mitzvot, oh haminiyah, or from the refraining, the restraining oneself, min from those which are halotase, those mitzvot which are the don't do these things, don't eat the cheeseburger, don't have the pig, don't speak badly about someone else, don't embarrass someone else. All of the don'ts are to remove from us and keep us away from that which will drag us down. And all of the do's are things that attach us to one aspect of these aspects of loftiness. And it's interesting. Every mitzvah that we do, well, let me put it this way. We do our mitzvot. Right. We don't just have our beliefs. We do our beliefs. The mitzvot that we do are ways to do our belief. For example, I'll give you two examples. We believe that God is the creator. How do we do our belief in God as a creator? Shabbat. Shabbat is the way we do our belief in God as a creator. For six days, we're involved in creation. And comes the seventh day, we stop. We cease our creative activities. That is why it's not a breach of Shabbos for me to walk a little over a mile to Shul on Shabbos. But it would be a breach of Shabbat for me to hit a light switch. Because it's not a day of rest. It's a day of not being involved in creative activities, in shaping and altering the world according to my powers and my abilities. I don't shape and alter the world when I walk a mile to shul. I do shape and alter the world when I hit a light switch and all of a sudden the, the room is bathed with light. So we do our belief in God as a creator. We do the the part, the parts about making Kiddush and Abdallah, which is the do's of Shabbos, and the don'ts of Shabbos, we refrain. So by those physical actions, that is our belief in God as the creator. Men wear tefillin. We're literally wrapped in the Shem Hashem, in the name of God. We have the Shin, we have the Dalid, we have the Yud, Shakai, one of God's names. We're literally wrapped in God's presence. What does that act 
represent? Well, whenever a person does a mitzvah, they are bathed in this presence of God. Tefillin is the way we do our belief that a mitzvah wraps us in the name, the presence of God. So everything that we do, every mitzvah, whether it's a mitzvah say, the mitzvah to do, or a mitzvah lo say, the mitzvah to not do, whatever it is, each of those is how we are meant to utilize this world and to turn the darkness into light, to turn a cow's hide into tefillin, a cow's hide into a safer Torah, and to turn a physical person, ourselves, into a holy being, which is what we say each time that we make a bracha before a mitzvah. Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav, that you have sanctified us through your mitzvot. Through your mitzvot, there is a trend a transformation of darkness to light. What is that? Myself. And even though, as he said in the previous paragraph before that, even though we don't see it in this world, it is befoal. It is not yet befoal, it is bekoach. It is potential. It's happening and enabling that to then happen at that later point. The ulam, prata mitzvot kulam, the details of all these mitzvot, of each mitzvah, the chaim prate kol mitzvah the mitzvah, and also the details of each and every mitzvah. Hine heim meyusadim al mitat mitziuto vinyano shel adam mechol bechinotav. They are based on the the essence of mankind. And all the aspects of a person in all of his dealings. And that shleimut and that perfection that is necessary. Each one with its conditions, with its boundaries. That which is necessary for that person to reach this level. This Wisdom, this lofty wisdom, God's wisdom that knows all this to its fullest. And knows every aspect of who we are as human beings. And all that which created around us as he has created it. He oversees all of this. The Kalala, and he included call on mitzareich everything that is necessary for a person to reach this ultimate dveikus, which is the purpose of creation. He included all that is necessary the mitzvot in those taryag mitzvot in those mitzvot shetzivanu b'torato that he commanded us in the Torah as it's written by itzavenu Hashem laasot Hashem has commanded us to do. Et kol achukim, all of these chukim, latov lanu. Why? Latov lanu. In order that it will be good for us. But we now have a better understanding. Because we understand what is the epitome of tov? God. What does God want to give us? The epitome of tov, which is he wants to grant us connection to him. Latov lanu, now we understand to mean to achieve this epitome of Tov, which is this connection to Hashem. Vihine. Paragraph 6. Anybody want to chime in? Questions? Challenges? Uh, Rabbi, I, I just want to understand. Yes. So what he's saying is that we don't have a, an option to do to get close to Hashem this world. Only What he's saying, uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that, Galia. Because when we are doing the mitzvot, well, well, we'll see the next paragraph. That will help us a little bit. What he's saying is the that ultimate dveikus, that clear ultimate dveikus, that can only be later on. 
at one of the later stages. But even in this world, let's let's see Vav now. I think I think that will address what the point you're making, Elliot. So the root of all of this Wait. service to Hashem. That a person is always turning towards. A person always has this God consciousness. That a person will know and will understand. That he was created to have this closeness with God. Every mitzvah is there for this God consciousness. We walk into a store, into a grocery store, and we start checking the packages for the proper kosher certification that is meant to give us this God consciousness. I'm in Hashem's world. I'm in my own Garden of Eden. And there are the trees that I can eat from, the trees that I can eat from. And that's what I'm doing when I'm checking that. I am recognizing that I'm here in God's presence. And the reason why I'm here is to connect myself, to bring my close, to bring my to, to overcome the inclinations that I have to do things that are spiritually harmful, and to commit myself to my creator. The opposite of the tava, the desires of the physicality. And my actions will all be towards, focused towards attaining this purpose and not deviating from it. So coming back to what you said before, uh, Galit. So a person, if they're living like this, they certainly feel a certain degree of dvekas, of being in Hashem's hands and Hashem's warm embrace, even in this world. What he's saying, though, is the ultimate dvekas that we are working towards, that will not be when we are in our present physical state. But a person can feel a tremendous degree of dvekas, of being in Hashem's embrace and being in Hashem's presence, in feeling that Hashkacha Pratis, that divine providence over all that is coming our way. But it takes work to keep that focus right. going. The mitzvot are there in order to allow us and to help us to have that focus constantly. I think I've shared before the story that I, I, I'm not sure if I should, with this group or another group, that there was a a fellow who was going through conversion years a number of years ago and he 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 had a managerial position in in the work that he was doing he was pretty high up there and he comes to me one night and he's all upset and he said you know rabbi i'm learning all these things with you i'm being careful with this and careful with that but you know in doing this mitzvah and that mitzvah and he spoke about kashrut right he's being very very careful with kashrut and he said, but then I had to fire, there was a worker who wasn't doing a good job. And I blasted the guy, I wiped the floor with the guy. And I felt so bad afterwards. So he said, no, what good is all this stuff that I'm, you know, being so careful, you know, with all these mitzvot, if that's, how if that's how I'm going to treat someone else. And I said to him, you're 100% right. You're missing the boat. You're 100% right and you're missing the boat. The purpose of all of the mitzvot, as he says, that we have this constant consciousness of God. And the mitzvot is supposed to give you this constant consciousness so that when you are dealing with this worker who is not doing a good job, you recognize that this is a child of God, a son or a daughter of Hashem that's there in your sitting in your office. So how should you treat this person? How should you speak to this person? You might have to fire the person. They're not doing a good job. But how do you do it? Do you leave them feeling like a piece of dirt that's being tossed out? Or do you build them up as much as you can that they can then go forward and succeed in their next, in their, in their next role? One of my, uh, the Rabbi Mandelkorn, 
who was the Rosh Hashiva of the uh, Yeshiva that I taught at in Israel, he'd always say, I hate the term that someone's going to get thrown out of Yeshiva, thrown out of school, or even better, kicked out. No one's getting kicked. No one is getting thrown. What a terrible term to use. If for whatever reason a student can't remain at whatever institution, so then you have to find the right the right place for them. If this is not the right match, you're not throwing them out. You throw out garbage. You don't throw out people. You don't kick anybody out. And he was legendary that if a guy had to be asked to leave the yeshiva, he would invite him to stay at his house until they would together find a better match for them. They weren't being thrown out. He's taking him into his own house in order to take care of that person. And, and that is what all the mitzvot are meant to impress upon us. Every mitzvah is supposed to give us this God awareness at all times. And that then needs to spill over into everything we do, every interaction that we have, the way we speak to people, the way the, the face we have on. Right? If I'm walking around with an angry face, that causes other people to get to get sullen, to get down. I'm walking around with a smile, other people get that needs to influence everything that we do. And when a person is doing that, there is devacus. There is this connection that a person can feel even right here now in this world. But the ultimate devacus. Galia, that in fact is talking about that he's talking about the ultimate purpose, the ultimate dvekus, this overwhelming dvekus, that uh, the connection clinging, that is at one of the later stages. Rabbi, that's why yes. on the ark it says, Shaviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. Uh huh. Yes. Right? It's exactly the point. Making. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 remember that God is out there. How easy yeah. it is to misplace your keys and you forget. Five minutes ago, you put your keys away and you don't remember where they are. If that's the case, how easy it is to forget God. That's yeah. why Judaism reminds you with all these commandments to remember God at all times. Yeah, and not forget. Yeah, and that's and that's point. why we. We have, we have an idea to, uh, of making our brachot, ideally making a hundred brachot a day. And yeah. if a person is thinking as they're saying, Baruch Atah Hashem, right? if a person is thinking as they're saying those words, so then they have that focus. Then they right. have that, that understanding. And that's how they, they hope to maintain that focus as they are making our way through the day. Yeah. We go to and sleep it, with the Shema, we wake up with the Moda'ani, and uh, and then we're off to the races to try to right. keep ourselves focused, right? And, throughout the day. Yeah. and the Gentiles, you know, they're so proud. The Gentiles are so proud of their, their connection with the Almighty, whatever. But they just have feelings. We are acting upon it. Whether we drink a glass of water, okay. whether we go to a bathroom, whether we go, there are out. many Gentiles who are also well connected. Uh, you know, I'm just, I, I like to just look at ourselves, right? And, and, and this is, this is the path that's laid out in front of us, right? In yeah. order to give us, give us the means to connection. And also, the, this also connects to when we wake up in the morning. So we wash our hands in the morning, right? And one of the reasons that's given is just like the Kohen, just like a priest would enter into the Beit HaMikdash, enter into the temple, to do the avoda, to do the divine service. So the Kohen would need to wash his hands beforehand. When we wake up in the morning, we wash our hands. Why? Because we are also a Kohen. We're also entering our temple, our Beit HaMikdash. What is our Beit HaMikdash? The day that's ahead of us, the people that we'll deal with, the situations that we'll deal with, the places we'll go, and that becomes our Beit HaMikdash. And... Just like the Beit HaMikdash was a place where Hashem's presence was constantly felt, so too we have all of these mitzvot to try to give us this God awareness, this God consciousness. That is what it is all about. And that reminds me is, is 
קדושים אתם להשם כי אני קדוש. In other words, we are commanded to be, to be uh, קדושים. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that's the point, is that yeah. that's what we and, and we're given And we're given the, the means to do it through all of the mitzvot. Let's That's just right. start Zion. We have another few minutes before Marav. I go to Dav Marav. It's going to be divided. This is seven now into two categories. One is that which we do because we are commanded. Secondly, that that we do because we need to do it. Perush, meaning, Hayachad, one is Klal Maseya Mitzvot. That is the mitzvot. That's what we are commanded to do. Vasheni, and the second category, Klal Masha Adam Mishnah Meshmen Olam Litzarko. That which a person utilizes this world for his needs. Maseya Mitzvot, the mitzvot, Hine, hatachlit bo la'adam shi'aseh umuvarhu. The purpose that we've already explained. Shu l'kayeh mitzvot baro. To fulfill the commands of his creator. La'asot cheftso. And to do his will. V'hine hu m'kayem cheftso yit barach shmo b'zeh b'shnei drachim. This is beautiful what he says. Actually, every mitzvah that we do is a double mitzvah. It is a double fulfillment of God's will. The Hainu, meaning, Kumikaim Chetzo, right? God said, Ukshartam laot al yadecha, it should be bound as a sign on your hand. So you're doing that, you're, you're wrapping the tefillin onto your arm. She tzivel, she yasei, commanded us to do that action, and he's doing it. Vishenit, but then there's the second level of that. Kine, the masahu hinehu mishdalem. As a result of that action, I am now becoming changed, transformed, uplifted. In bachat hamedrigot hashlim, what she told the mitzvah he in the in the manner, the aspect that that mitzvah changes me, as we mentioned. And therefore, that's fulfilling a second tier of the will of God, which is God wants us to become perfected so we can achieve his goodness. So there are two tiers of this will of God. There is the base level. God wants the women to light the Shabbat candles. They light the Shabbat candles. That's the will of God. And now, because of that, they are transformed. And now they are readied for this closeness to Hashem, which is the will of God. So there is a double fulfillment of the Ratzon Hashem, of the will of God in each and every mitzvah that a person does. That's a clear double level. But that which we use the world, not when it comes to a mitzvah, but out of necessity. First of all, it needs to be within the parameters that God's will has set. Not there, there would not be anything there that God has prohibited us from. And, there should, and rather it should be for the healthy, the health of the body and the maintaining of my life in the best possible way. And not through our draw, being drawn towards the physicality. We will double back to this point uh, next week. I, I apologize if I need to run to Marv. It is... Uh, just about 6.30. Okay, yes, Shikoach, everybody. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Thank you Rabbi. All next week. Bye, 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 Bye,